Welcome, I'm your host Dustin. Today, we're going to talk about a new release, an actual movie review. Um, I know we did one on Nightbreed, I believe it was last week. Um, and it's been a lot of films that have hit the theaters over the last week or so. Um, and we're going to get to pretty much all of them. I want to try to start doing views on these films once they start hitting theaters and once they've been out for a few days and let people go and see them um, and then drop my reviews as their own opinion and whatnot and then I'm just going to come over here and give you my take on on these films um, so today we're going to be talking about Talk to Me this is um, I think one of the biggest and most anticipated films of 2023 um, from Danny and Michael Filippo of Raka Raka fame on YouTube. I actually really enjoy their YouTube content because of how ridiculously crazy it is. It did, like, you know, you guys probably would have seen, like, I don't know, this had to have been like 10 years ago, the Ronald McDonald stuff, and they would have like this crazy Ronald McDonald going around and you know, brutalizing people, and they did like a Mortal Kombat thing. Um, and they're from Australia, and I believe they are now in the States. I think. I know they did come here, but they might have moved back. I don't know. It, um, they, they've been, like, all over, all over the map. Um, but they run a really good channel over there, some really groundbreaking, you know, boundary-pushing content, in my opinion, especially on the YouTube side of things. There's not a lot of, you know, stunt channels out there to do what they do um and to you know do everything as practical as they can but they would also mess around with you know special effects and stuff and this film is kind of the best of both worlds for them essentially um you know a little bit more on the practical and not so much on the um digital but they did um i believe morph them together for some scenes and hey now, I always say that you know CGI has its own place when it's mixed in with practical. When you want to enhance something that you've already did, um, and you want to add an edge to it, using CGI, I think, is a really good complement on that. But if you're just focusing and just being like, I'm going to do this and then wait for post and CGI with it, I think you're doing it wrong. And I've always been an advocate for that. Um, but before we start going into the main plot of the film and you know, fully diving into it and spoiling things, I don't want to do that right now. I want to take the first you know, 10 minutes or so and kind of just do my overall thoughts on this without spoiling or talking too much. Um, I do want to say right off the bat, as much as I enjoyed this film, I really did enjoy it. I just think the hype around it may have softened this film um for me at least because there were so many people saying you need to watch this is great and even like you know listening to them talk about it because they did a whole video of them being signed to a24 and they had it um show at a film festival last year I forget which one it was but they had it at a, at a film fest and you know what I'm, I'm so happy that they were able to create something outside of youtube and and you know, make a name for themselves in a wider lens, so to speak, and uh, be signed to a big movie company right now. I mean, everybody has their own thoughts on A24 and, and whatnot, and if they think it's a, a, a good company or if they are, you know, essentially just picking up all these indie films to ruin them. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, people that I have talked to or have been reading online that they think that they take these indie filmmakers and these films and they kind of twist it and make it their own but as far as i know with this one at least they didn't touch it at all they let you know danny and michael do their thing because it was already made so i don't think they may go back and do any kind of corrections but anyway that was a little bit of a tangent let's go back to the actual film talk to me and what i thought of it I think since this year, we have had, you know, quite a bit of horror come out, but 
on a scale um, of going to the movies and seeing a, a blockbuster, so to speak, um, we haven't had a lot. Been a lot of streaming ones. Been a lot of limited run movies in theaters. And if you aren't around a theater that's showing a limited run film, you're not going to be able to see it unless it goes to streaming, rent it. So to be able to see this film in almost any theater, with it being an indie film, is amazing. And um, I'm always going to say that I think if it wasn't for Terrifier 2 paving the way last year, we wouldn't be seeing indie films in the theater to the extent that we are this year. Because there's been a lot. And like I said, whether they're limited runs or a film like this. Um, so I'm happy to see more indie films out there. And this is one that I would say you need to go and see. Definitely see it in the theater because the sound design is, I think that's one of the more positive things I can really say about this film is how great sound design is. How much care they, they put into it. How amazing it is to be in a theater. There are all these things behind you, in front of you, to the side. It's like using all the speakers. We are 100 percent sound design to make this film more impactful and it definitely does so sitting at home you don't have a good surround sound or even have headphones on when you're watching this film i don't know if it's going to impact you the way that it impacted me in the theater so i'm kind of excited to see how it will transfer over from a theater experience to at home experience um, there's no really jump scares in this film so i do have to hand it to that if you're thinking this is going to be a film that's have going to rely heavily on the jump scares because oh my god these are filmmakers I've never heard of or i know what their youtube channel is like they're only going to be doing boo scares and getting jump um no they are really heavily um relying on imagery and, and what you're seeing character eyes mia played by um i have sophie wild and she does a great job of really you know guiding you through this whole experience because there's some there's some funny things that happen in here and there's also some really disturbing things that happen and um it's a really good ride i would say i i enjoyed it a lot and yes, go see this in the theater. You get this full experience, this full body experience with sound design and great cinematography, seeing how beautiful and horrifying this film can be. Um, go support it, because I want to see more from Danny, Michael, outside of YouTube. So I, I really, really hope that this gets a good pull. I think I have the budget here. And as much as it is an indie film, I think it's a higher budget film. Um, yes. <laughs> it's a pretty big budget for an indie film, but um where, you know, Danny and Michael come from, they are able to pretty much have this amount of money because of their success on YouTube. The budget was four point five million. So that's a lot. There's a lot, and you're gonna, you got, everybody's gonna say, How is it an indie film? How is it an indie film with a big budget like that? Well, it's a big, it's an indie film because of how it was made and the resources that they used. And they did everything in house, they weren't using a studio. The studio only came along after it was shown at a film festival. So it could have a high budget, but still be an indie film. I think people don't really understand that. So I wanna take a second to kind of just talk about that. You know, whether it's a film that's made for $500 or a film that's made for $4.5 million, if it's not backed by a big studio, if it's not funded from a big studio like 24, it's an indie film. You made it on your own dime. You did it with your own resources. Um, you aren't trying to bring in gigantic stars to um, get people to go and watch the film. The stars of this film 
are pretty much Danny and Michael because of people who have no Raka Raka. Um, and they're like, I'm going to go and see what these guys are doing because I'm a fan of the YouTube. Uh, there's not really big stars in here. There's one. And I think I have seen her in other things. Is Miranda Otto plays Sue. She's the, she's the mother of, of one of the other main characters in this film. I think I've seen in her other thing. Um, does a great job. So, yes, support this film. It is an indie film. I don't care what the budget is. Um, go support it. And I think from right now, I'm going to jump right into spoilers. Here we go. Spoilers. It's in a fucking great. It's a great film. It's just overhyped. But there are some things I want to talk about that I think pushes this to an above average film. Is how they are able to take something that feels sort of familiar. You have this hand, right? The hand is essentially the gateway from our side to the other side. Say these phrases, talk to me, and then I let you in. You're able to be possessed by whatever kind of spirit or anything that's on the other side. You, as the person who's holding the hand, say Mia during this where she can take hold this hand and then say the phrases, talk to me. You can see the person or the spirit or demon, as you will, on the other side, and say, I let you in, it, you, let, you invite them into your body. So now they are in control, and you can see all these other things on the side. It's very suspenseful. And that's the one scene that was you know, kind of talked about a lot. So this is what, you th what you're kind of getting into with this film. The beginning of the film starts with a guy walking into a party essentially and he's looking for his brother he's asking people where is he where is he and then he goes into his brother's room and kind of not there he's there but he's not um so he goes into the room with his brother and brings him out and kind of tells him to get out of it but he ends up being stabbed and then his brother kills him <laughs> and that's the opening scene. It's it's kind of crazy. Everybody's filming it. It takes place definitely during the modern age. They wanted it to be modern, and if something like this were to happen in real life, it would be theme. It would be filmed, especially nowadays. And um, it gets really really crazy. You got after this, you get invited. In the lives of Mia, um, and then her friend, uh, crap. At the, Mia, Jaden, her, trying to find them on here. Riley, I think it's Jaden. Jaden's the the main friend, and then their um, her brother is Riley, and then Mia, and then the mother who do, and then you meet all these other friends. Um, and then things kind of get really really crazy. Mia starts getting jealous because we find out that the person that Jaden is dating is his um uh so many characters guys give me one second um Daniel Daniel she's dating Daniel and I guess um Mia was dating Daniel at some point but also we find out that Mia lost her mother and it could have been a drug overdose it could not have been a drug overdose and they kind of play on that later in the film so there's this house party and to get invited, and Mia wants to essentially show off to Daniel because he's probably getting this hint that there's a little bit of friction there. So she gets invited um, to do this thing with the hand, and she's so adamant of doing it. But then, during this, she also realized that the demon has taken hold of Mia, pointing to Riley, saying that they're going to get Riley. They want Riley. They're very fixated on this boy. So he's freaking out. And Mia comes to. Then other things start happening. Blah, blah, blah. You know, building characters. And then we start realizing that Mia. Having 
I don't know, ulterior motives. Jaden starts feeling these things. And then one night, they invite Daniel, um, Ducket, and uh, other friend. So many guys. I think it might be Tyson. And they all bring them all over. And then they have this seance. And then you start realizing that they're using this hand as essentially a drug, which is kind of crazy to me. And um, I, I kind of like that. It's a different play on, you know, possession film. A lot of people do call this a possession film, but it's not really. Another reason why I want to call it a drug film is because of how these people are using it, especially during the scene when they have everybody together. This is the big scene, I would say the, the climax of the film. Well, one of the climaxes of the film, because it's a lot. Um, as I start, you know, wanting to use this because Mia wants to use it to talk to her mother. As we said earlier, mother, uh, her, Mia lost her mother due to a drug overdose or whatever it may be, and then... Her father, she's not really close to her father, that's why she lives with her friends, but then she also goes home every now and then, and we get that kind of side, that side story. Uh, there's a lot that happens in this film, so I'm just trying to hit on the key points that really engaged me the most, because I did lose interest every now and then, but then it brought me back in. Um, so they, they do this thing, and then Jaden doesn't do it, but her brother Riley wants to. And Jaden, I think, leaves. Um, I forget why, but she, she walks out. I think it's because Jaden wants to do it. And then she's getting upset and whatnot. But then Mia takes it upon herself. Before everything gets packed up. Um, oh, it's because Daniel starts acting really weird and like starts making out <laughs> with the dog, which is really, really weird. But she, he's also possessed. Um, so there, there comes a point where she walks out with Daniel. But... It's Mia, Riley, and the two friends that are in the room who own the hand, essentially. So, Mia says, Riley, go ahead. You can do it, but only for like 50 seconds. So, if you go anywhere over 90 seconds, they can essentially take over you. And also, if you die while the demon is possessing you, they pretty much have control over you 100%, and they won't let go. Um, because obviously you're dead. Um, so Riley gets, you know, hooked into it. But as he gets hooked into it, it's Mia's mother, essentially, that's there because of her talking to Riley. Here's that the demon is saying, me, like with something that her mother would only say. I would call her that. So she kept telling the, the friends, okay, wait, 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 wait. I want to talk to him. I want to talk to him. But then it starts essentially killing Riley, like banging his head and all this other things. It gets knocked out and it gets really crazy. He has to be you know, transported to the hospital. The mother's asking questions and saying that, Mia, did you give him drugs and blah, blah, blah. Now she's kind of shunned from the family. And then she goes home with her father. And then there's a point when they ask, okay, when we cut this off, when we took the hand away from him, we blow out the candle. So that's another very crucial thing. Is you have a candle, you got to blow out the candle, and that ends it. Get the hand away, blow out the candle, that's it. You're done. And then uh, they're not sure. So they have this brilliant idea of bringing the hand to the hospital, getting the candle and everything. And then having it do the thing again with Riley. Obviously, at this point, Riley is so fucking knocked out on drugs and hooked up to all these machines that they don't know if it's even working. So they do it once or twice. But then Mia takes the hand and wants to talk to a spirit that can bring Mia to where Riley is. And you see that he's essentially being fed on in the spirit world with his spirit essentially being 
killed, eaten, alive, or however you want to say, eat, dead, <laughs> um, by these spirits. So then she gets taken out. And it's really kind of gruesome. We don't see a lot. But what you do see is impactful. It is fun. It's fun to see. I wanted more of that. I wanted to see more of the other side. And then, you know, more things start amping up. And then Mia, you know, she really wants to talk to her mother. And then we don't know. At one point, we, the lines get so blurred. We don't know if Mia's taken over by a demon, whatever it is. Because then she starts seeing things at home with her father. And then she ends up killing her father. Because the demon that she's talking to is her father, but it's not her father. And then when she comes to, but we see from her father's perspective when she wa when he walks in, that she's out on the floor and he's grabbing something. There's nothing there, and then he like slits his throat with a knife, and then dead. And then we start going towards the end of the climax of where well, end of the story, end of the story, sorry, where. She essentially takes Riley because the only way to do it is to kill Riley because that's what her mother on the other side is saying. The only way to save him is to end him, essentially. So, goes to the hospital, breaks in, gets Riley. She tricks Jaden by saying, hey, I'm at home, come help me. Jaden drives all the way to her house and then Mia meets her mother, Sue, and says, I want to be with Riley alone for a few minutes. Okay. Then she takes Riley outside in a wheelchair by the highway. And this is the scene, the biggest scene of the film, of what's going to happen. Jaden somehow manages to fly all the way back to the hospital because she finds out that she's not there. And then <sighs> like this scene is fucking nuts, man. All the things that, that happened with her running, saving Riley. See them running down, and Mia lets go of this wheelchair that Riley's in. But then there's a crash. You see the car flip over. Other people get hurt. But then we see Mia get up. She's, you know, broken. But then we see in the distance, Riley is okay. Riley is still there. And Aiden's still there. Oh, it was a scene that, like, I was like, what the fuck happening? And then we get to the ending, the true ending, that Mia is, in fact, and how we know this, because see her link hands with somebody who has the hand. And then she's the spirit, and it's... It's so fucking crazy, the ride that they put you through. And it's a film that I do want to go see again. I wanted to see again before I did this review, but I needed to do it so that way I can get it out as fresh as possible. My first take viewing. I don't like doing a review. I can viewing because there's some things that I might not like about it, I guess the second time around or whatever it may be. So I'd like to give you my initial thoughts. And then I'll probably give you guys an update after I see the film again. I don't know if anything has changed. But um, as a horror film that came out this year, that is an indie film. That is from A24. Whether you, whatever you think of by these YouTubers, Danny and Philippo, I think it's a pretty solid film. I just think the hype got around it. And um, before going into our final thoughts and our overview of this film um, I'm going to take a second to talk about our sponsors hello let's take a second to talk about our sponsor for this video Dubby Energy this is a drink that has helped me kick 100% all soda I don't crave soda anymore and if I try to go drink a, uh, any soda I get a really bad taste like you can taste the syrup and all the sugar that's in there but dubby it's like more water than anything else so it's super hydrating it keeps hydrated and it also gives you clean and very natural 
energy. Um, there's no sugar, no fillers, no artificial dyes. It's just powder. You put it in a drink, shake it all up. There's a little ball inside that mixes up uh, the powder with water, and um, you're good to go. Um, it was um, a long time coming, honestly, for me to kick soda because I was addicted to it, and I would have it almost every single day, multiple times a day. Um, I still drink coffee, and that's something I don't think I'm ever going to kick because I enjoy my coffee. And when I don't want, you know, an energy drink, and I want something you know, a little bit bolder, I would have a coffee. And um, that also gives me a lot of energy, but not as much as this. But coffee, sometimes I can come down and I can crash pretty hard. But if you're looking for a nice, clean energy drink, try out Dubby. Uh, you guys will come on down very nice and smooth. No jitters, no headache, nothing. Um, when I drink this whole thing of Dubby, I have about five to six hours worth of energy and I come down very, very easily. So if you guys are in the market for trying something new, head over to Dubby and use our code BHOPOD for 10% off anything in art. So you want to go try it. They have free packs. You can get a shaker. If you like it, stick with it. And you can just keep using that code over and over again. And every time you do it, 10% off anything on their site. So thank you, Dubby, and thank you for everybody supporting the show. Okay, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for sticking in for that sponsor. Please go support Dubby. They're amazing. And they keep me going for the show. Um, so let's go into our final thoughts. Do I think this is an amazing horror film? I think it's just about above average for me. And um, I know some people are going to say, what? What are you talking about? Because when you go on... Um, like even IMDb, it's like got a 7.5, Rotten Tomatoes for toma the, the critic score is 95, audience score is 82. I think it's just about above average for me. Um, like I said, there was some points where it kind of took me out and I got back in because a lot, there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of building of characters and a lot of backstory and not so much horror. The horror is really what's happening in Mia's life and seeing it fall apart and um, seeing all these other things happen in her life and realizing there's people in her life that are essentially dying or whatever it may be, her essentially dying at the end. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of that back and forth and blah, 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 you know, drama, <laughs> life drama. But with it being above average, I think my score would be about a seven, seven out of 10. Um, it might change on a second viewing. I don't know. We'll see. It's a film that you do need to go see in the theater. Like I said, the sound design is amazing. It's a fresh take. It really is. Fresh take film. Go see it. Please go support it. Support Danny and Michael. I want to see more from them. And let me know. What did you think? Talk to me. Do you think the, the, hype, the hype kind of died? I think hype killed it do you think the hype helped it or do you think it wasn't hyped up enough let me know um i'm gonna leave that there seven out of ten talk to me go see it go support it thank you to our sponsor dubby we'll see everybody on the next one